Okay. So the subject of this space is, is the general vibe around um, the asinine way motherfuckers have been behaving uh, in libertarian spaces for some time. And at this point, it's just gotten like, it's raised a fever pitch, especially since the, uh, the common right-wing bullshit is like, it's very much just accept us even though we hate you. There's been so many examples of this, and it's been this way for years. Uh, libertarianism started out, uh, politically anyway, as a left-wing proposition. It was originally that way. Uh, Rothbard confirmed that it was that way, and he said that like it had been... Uh, the term had been co-opted, basically, by uh, the libertarian right in America. Now, say what you will about that, right? But the general vibe is that a lot of the sort of thought that formed the basis for libertarianism was a direct result of left-wing thought. And anybody who doesn't think that is being fundamentally unserious... Um, th the whole idea of anarchy and opposing rulership structures started with sort of the revolutionary slash insurrectionary movements that existed for a long time. And those movements that existed for a long time included people like Bakunin, Kropotkin, Proudhon, uh, Warren, fucking, like, Spooner, uh, Tucker, Tolstoy, a whole bunch of people who are on the left. Um, and when people try to pretend that being against the left is all you need to do in order to be libertarian, in order to support freedom, I think that's asinine as fuck. Um, most notably, because in order to reach these conclusions, something you have to do is pretend that supporting the right-wing politicians and policies that would benefit anti-communist efforts, whatever those were, uh, is acceptable. And, uh, Pinochet is an example of this. Uh, the people who support like, you know, the fucking export of Nazis from world, like, World War II Germany, like, post-war Germany, um, are another example. The people who, like, say that it's okay for violence to happen as long as it's happening, uh, to commies, because commies aren't people, are another. They're the same people who have no problem throwing helicopter alleged jokes around. But there are people like me who have known for some time now that they aren't joking. That those aren't just bits of humor that they're throwing out there because they think it's funny. What those are, are very clearly and manifestly um, threats against their political enemies. And they have been threats for a long time, which is why... Uh, like, it's not just jokes that they're doing. They're voting in people who agree with that idea. They're supporting political movements of people who support those ideas. They're gradually working those ideas in with their podcast, with their, you know, fucking articles, with their books. They're doing all of this on a routine basis, and they're doing it for the purposes of a gradual normalization of the dehumanization of their political opposition. It's been the case for a long time. It's been the case uh, ever since uh, the Chicago boys started to, you know, soften the blow for people affected by what Naomi Klein accurately called the shock doctrine. It was, like, manifest and clear 
when the common person of uh, Chile was exiled uh, <laughs> if they didn't do what the state wanted them to. Um, and a bunch of right-wingers in America, largely funded by the Koch brothers and other associated people, um, those people made excuses for it and called it a miracle. But Pinochet did things like soak people in piss vats, uh, rape women with dogs. Um, he had the, uh, the, the fucking ex-Nazi torturer, Paul Schaefer, who was a pedophile, um, like, you know, run a Colonia Dignidad. Uh, and what that was was a giant torture colony um, that, like, not only victimized women and children, but also directly murdered communists, tortured them. He would crush them with vehicles. He would uh, throw them out of helicopters. He would do various shit to them that was absolutely ghastly, if not just beating the fuck out of them in the middle of the street or shooting them down. He had death squads. He had fucking torture. He had fucking the same kind of shit that people claim to be against for years here in libertarian circles. But for some reason, they fetishize that shit. And they always said, oh, we're just joking. You just can't take jokes. But it's never been jokes. And we're seeing that now. We're seeing that because uh, while Javier Malay, ANCAP Wonderboy, fucking goes off and activates dictatorial powers, halves the value of the Argentinian peso, um, allows rent to be paid in dollars, thus effectively doubling prices, um, and then only uh, fucking when people pay it in pesos anyway does the average cost of rent drop at all, and still not normalized, by the way. Um, and all of this while criminalizing protests, forcing people to, 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 to not wear masks so that he can use facial recognition technology to scan all of them, and basically routinely increasing the amount of tyranny. Uh, when, when, when this is the way things are, and this is what's excused, it should be no surprise that, like, the common fucking conception of libertarians is these people are fascists. And right now, uh, there are multiple libertarians, most notably uh, Sal Mayweather, who, it, who are actively engaged in promotion of basically this fascism. And um, my, uh, my guest on this space today uh, is somebody who was consistent in calling this sort of thing out, and also a writer at the site I launched a few weeks ago called Anarch Unity. So here is ANCAP Air. Let me get this guy on. Hello. I think that should be working for you. Let me know if anything is wrong. Yeah, I got you. Can you hear me? Yep. Cool, cool. Thanks for having me on, bud. Yeah, so generally speaking... I just went over the fact that, like, libertarians have routine issues with uh, sort of accepting fascism in the name of jokes, allegedly. And one of the things that I noticed uh, with you is that you've been noticing that, too. And, like, I think that this has been a long time coming, is certain people realizing that these people aren't actually joking and never actually have been. When they say commies aren't people or when they make helicopter jokes, they're just being serious. And now you're you're very much um, you know, you're you're very much on board with this idea that this has gone in a direction that is antithetical to liberty, if I understand correctly. No, I you're spot on. Um you know, I I do think that there are a lot of people that do not legitimately mean the free helicopter ride sentiment. Like if it came down to it in, you know, in reality, they would not throw a communist from a helicopter, but there are uh, uh, people who keep pushing it far. Um, you know, like I, I sent out a tweet that said, stop dehumanizing communists, be better, be better than they are. And some people responded saying, okay, fair point. Uh, and then others were like, but you can't dehumanize property of the state. You can't, 
uh, dehumanize that which isn't human. And it's like, look, man, I'm, I'm being serious now. And you need to understand that there's a time for jokes, there's a time for memes, and then there's a time for being serious. And while I, I admit it, I absolutely admit, I do not know the whole story of what's going on in Argentina. What is being portrayed is not something that should be celebrated. Um, you know, it, it's something that can easily be propagandized. Like, even if it was justified, uh, what is being portrayed in that video that people are celebrating is easily propagandized uh, against people uh, and, you know, libertarians and, and and caps because all it shows is people who are otherwise being peace getting oppressed by the state, which is something that and caps and libertarians and anybody of an, any anarchist flavor should condemn no matter what. Uh, you know, I heard one take that um, some of some of these protesters stole a mattress from a homeless person and set it on fire and then threw rocks at uh, the fire department trying to put it out. Okay, I can kind of understand the use of force in that to a degree if it's just targeted to those individuals who deprived that homeless person of his bed. But that's not what the videos are showing. Uh, you see people that are uh, you know, taking force against the police um, and you don't know the context of it. I always err on the side that the state is doing evil because I have to, because the state has proven throughout global history that it is always the oppressor and it is never the oppressed. Um, and I, while I philosophically and fundamentally disagree with the protesters, the, the, the tankies, if you will, uh, they're not initiating violence that i can see and that's important and because i can't see that uh because i can't rectify the use of force from the state it would be one thing if they were actively destroying private property and the state is stepping in uh that would be a bit more justifiable for me if the if the property owner can't do anything to defend his property but that's not again that's not what we're seeing and ultimately what we're seeing is people being oppressed uh for having a different opinion and that's how tyrannical states always start uh you know and so i really want to try and push this intellectual honesty and this intellectual consistency that look okay the the, the memes are over now uh let's Let's take this objectively because it's real life. It's happening to real people. And the joke that commies aren't people need to stop while we have this discussion. Well, so and the thing is, this is this is the real shit. Like a lot of these people who've been making these alleged jokes have been sneaking in um, like to official materials, podcasts, articles, videos, um, interview appearances, public speeches, etc., campaign uh, websites, uh, that, like, they're not joking, and that they do support violence against communists. They support either Pinochet himself, or they support one of the many other sorts of examples of violent oppression of left left-wing circles some of these people are active holocaust revisionists or revisionists of another sort like straight up the guy who who like sort of you know catalyzed a lot of people to realize this was a problem just now because he's part of the problem sal mayweather he straight up tried to post revisionist history of this morning about slavery he said Black History Month is the perfect time to honor these 60 to 90,000 black Confederates who defended the South against Lincoln's invasion. And, and I said, almost as good as the brave volunteers against the Viet Cong communists, or the minority volunteers who made war materials for Nazi Germany, many of them Jews. Oh wait, none of those people were volunteers, and neither were the slaves who were forced to fight for the South. Like, these people want to change history to make it right-friendly. And they want to do that because if we look at history in a stark fashion, we realize that not all capitalism is free market capitalism, that some of it is the state capitalism that even Rothbard was admitting was a thing. Like, Rothbard accurately said that 
the uh, like if, if we're to have the term capitalism at all, we need to distinguish between state capitalism and anarcho capitalism and oppose the, uh, the, the the prior like he if the quote is longer and I'll read it if, uh, right. if, if if the audience would like. But basically, like he was very clear that like the whole idea of anarcho capitalism is the result of shaking off the previous statist capital that has been like forcibly extorted and used to control people and so many people just hear capitalism hear right wing hear markets hear cryptocurrencies hear any of these buzzwords and it just may, like they instantly start jacking off like they don't care about reality they don't care about how that works in practical terms they don't care that like historically these people have been very violent they just, you know, they don't care about the violence because it's helping them with their economic right. system. And so why not? You know, if you're against me, you're with those, you know, you're with the state, despite the state backing my plays at almost every turn. It's it's pretty asinine. Right. No, I, I, I agree. Uh, and that's why I very much do differentiate the two. I call capitalism. Uh, nothing more than the free and voluntary exchange of private property. And I call anything else that involves the state's interference corporatism, because that's what it is. And so you're right. There is a distinction that needs to be made and understood. And it's there is. But to your point, a lot of people kind of still lack some of the critical thinking skills uh, to be able to condemn things that look good on its face. Like, you know, I know that, um, you know, you have feelings towards Sal. This is, this is the first time that Sal and I have ever had any disagreement. Um, and it's, it's a pretty big disagreement that I have with him to be sure. Mm -hmm. um, I, th I think that his praising of state agents invoking violence against what otherwise would be a peaceful demonstration as 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 it appears in the video uh i think that's wrong i think mm -hmm. that if you're going to post a video like that it better clearly and concisely show the justification for the violence as in defending legitimate private property and not just the state invoking its wrath against people who are political dissenters that's not libertarian and this justification that oh all socialists are and communists are basically uh conspiring to commit theft okay well then if you're going to apply that logic to it then you're giving carte blanche authority to every person in the u.s to attack anyone who votes for anything in the u.s mm -hmm. because after all they're all conspiring to rob you that's not how this works and that's a reason that you know, in my book, I, I when I define liberty, I use directly infringe because that direct infringement is what's important. An indirect infringement can be purely benign and innocent, but it's, you know, just a, a matter of circumstance. You don't have the right to invoke violence, you know, against somebody who hasn't directly harmed you. If it was indirect, there's pro there might might be a tort there that you can resolve through arbitration mediation maybe uh but you don't have the the right to invoke violence against somebody for a non-direct threat you don't have the right to go up and attack voters because they're voting and they're you know if their ideology wins then the state is going to rob you that is too many degrees of separation to justify that it has to be direct so you have the right to defend yourself against state agents who are stacking up on your door to invoke violence against you because you're non-complying for whatever reason. But you don't have the same right to invoke violence against the voter. Right. If that well, makes sense. See, and, and here's the other half of it. First off, the, <laughs> these motherfuckers are supporting a politician and th like the cop is directly acting in support of a politician. That politician is Javier Malay. Um, and that politician is sicking cops on people. And I, I wrote this down. I said, reminder for right-of-ways, who gets a government check? Cops, troops, politicians. 
veterans, administrators, feds, state-level workers, bureaucrats, Elon Musk, and most other billionaires, prisons and industrial complexes. Oh, and welfare recipients, more ethical than literally all these people. The amount of people who pretend their right away governments are somehow ethical because, quote, socialism is when government does stuff, and, quote, as long as the violence is against commies, paying the state to use violence is just, would be disappointing if y'all weren't already hacks. Like, I said that because these cops are literally paid by the state. These cops having the ability to do what they do is the result of robbery. And, like, so to say that it's acceptable for these cops to use this violence against those people is basically saying my robbers can beat up your robbers at the most charitable fucking like 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 application of terms and it's asinine because in this particular case these cops want to create like want to help Javier Malay create a prison industrial complex, a facial recognition super state, a market for, like, prison labor being, like, forced on all prisoners. These people that support Javier Malay are supporting a prison industrial complex motherfucker who lied about opposing the war on drugs, and then the first thing he did was hire Patricia Bullrich, who said she was going to wage a war on drugs. This is, like, fundamentally contradictory to, like, the, the principles that many libertarians claim. But even that, like, over the past year, you've been seeing more and more libertarians join the right in calling other people degenerate and claiming that they're doing behaviors that should be controlled even if those behaviors don't, um, don't actively control other people, like drugs, like, you know, porn, like fucking sex work, like being LGBT at all, like any of these sorts of things. And the culture war has been being fought in that direction for a while now. Um, so it's not surprising at all to me that these people would sink into yet more layers of fascism by supporting a fascist dictator who just criminalized protest and forced people to reveal their faces so that they can be scanned by facial recognition technology, added to a government database, and put into the machine where they will be forced to work. That is, like, anti-libertarian, but so are these people. Anti-libertarian. So they don't fucking care. It doesn't matter to them. They're getting what they want. They don't care that they're forcing it onto other people. They were never libertarian. They're here because they want to force people to do what they want. And maybe some of these people slipped uh, far enough in that direction that they're like, you know, um, they're, you know, suddenly like changed of mind and that they used to be on the side of the people that they are now calling degenerate subhuman communists and saying that they deserve to be beaten and killed and shit. But some of these people, um, are always that way and have always been that way. And the fact that these people are now aligning with those people, um, that's a problem. It's a problem that should be solved. It's a problem that should never have been allowed to be happening in the first place. But they've blackballed people like me, and now you're starting to feel the effects, like you tweeted about it. Yeah. Now, I, I, I don't disagree. You know, I, I, I'm i still going to give Malay the benefit of the doubt. I'm not, I'm not like, simping for him by any means. And I always approached, after he won, I, I've always approached him and Argentina with cautious optimism. And there are some some great things that he's done, you know, making the central bank and deregulating. Uh, but then again, you know, some of the things that you mentioned are also very concerning. And, you know, people shouldn't simp for any one person. Uh, you know, I don't care how good of a speech they give. I don't care... Uh, how much they portray themselves to align with your ideology. You need to pay attention to exactly what they do. And, you know, while I have no doubt that a lot of what he has done will make for a, a better Argentina, he's still at the head of state, meaning he is still in control of the enemy, which is the state. And with the video that's going around uh, and the violence that's being you know, that we're seeing in Argentina, it's, it's not looking good for, uh, for the idea of libertarianism. You can't dehumanize people 
because you disagree with them. That's how genocides start. That's how that that's how the the uh, the state has gotten away with oppressing so many people um, because because they're allowed to dehumanize because people dehumanize people that they disagree with. And in this day and age with uh, with social media, it seems to be so much easier to do because we're you know before the dehumanization could happen uh through you know through propaganda but there was never that interaction in today's society with with social media you're directly interacting with these people and continuing to dehumanize them as you interact with them because of the the base on solely the basis of philosophical disagreement and that's incredibly wrong the thing is if if we as anarchists as we as libertarians or or lovers of liberty if I, if I'll group us all that way if we as lovers of liberty really love liberty we have to realize that liberty is for everyone i don't care how philosophical uh, how philosophically different they are to you that includes commies that includes tankies that includes statists that includes authoritarians liberty is for everyone as well, long you know and 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 that's that's where we get into to trouble because you see it on, you know, people interacting on Sal's uh, posts talking about how this is perfectly okay because commies aren't people. Yeah. Well, and, but that's the thing though. Like, first off, a lot of these people aren't commies. A lot of these people are people who need to pay their bills, who need to not be homeless. Like I sympathize with them. I got rent yeah. coming up on Friday and like, you know, if I if if suddenly rent doubled because the the landlord could get away with it because the uh, the, the the state suddenly said that you could pay for you know pay your rent in uh, U Ukrainian money or you know fucking pay 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 your money in in Japan in, in Chinese yuan or something like that like and the value of the dollar would half I would probably be on a fucking line with these people. I would probably be trying to get these people, um, you know, anything, any sort of help they needed in like in the effect of trying to overthrow this system. When when we have like like a state, because like that's the thing. I don't I'm not optimistic with Malay. I knew what he was going to do because he put it in his platform and now he's doing it. He wanted a militarized transition. He wanted to, uh, you know, dollarize, forcing the Argentinian economy onto the U.S. central bank. Like, you know, eliminating your own central bank and then putting your country onto the central bank of another country, making your country a vassal state to them. That's not an upgrade. Uh, it's not ending the Fed to like, you know, for instance, if, if Ron Paul said, oh, I'm going to end the Fed. And then the day he got in, he sure did end ours. But then he got on the IMF, you know, or the right. World Bank and decided to make that the Federal Reserve of the U.S. So many Ron Paul supporters would be pissed. But somehow it's OK because like he's anti-communist because he has a chainsaw on stage because because. It's not okay. None of it's okay. But, you know, like, they don't care about what's okay. They don't care about what's reasonable. They're not going to look at his policies. They just like the fact that a commie might be being hit by a stick. Like, the other week, I had um, an interaction with somebody who wanted to bring back up fucking the, uh, the, the uh, fucking Proud Boys and Antifa clash because I said Andy No wasn't a journalist. Um, and I said Andy Andy No wasn't a journalist because he lied about having an exclusive to a situation that people had been talking about for two days, and because he's not a journalist, and this is manifestly obvious. Um, but then this motherfucker said that I'm a commie who who like and all this other shit, and they brought back up the fucking Proud Boys jumping like the the fucking pub owner. I forget cider cider mill something like that. Um, and base cider riot, that's what it was. And basically this place was a union organizing hub and a place where a lot of leftists hung out and the owner didn't want proud boys there. Now from a propertarian perspective, you have to accept that you have to not go to a property of somebody who does not welcome you there. 
the fact right. that this is controversial in certain right wing circles because commies don't believe in property, um, then I guess your principles are as shallow as theirs you claim to be. Um, but like these people came up on this fucking this bar and started to be violent. And after several fights were lost, like honorably, to the point where they were shaking the Antifa people's hands, um, they fucking started to brutalize people, including this one woman who, like, they started to be violent toward while she was walking them away from the property and, um, you know, along with a group and eventually smacked her in the back of the skull with a club. And. Wow. <laughs> Like, they smacked her in the back of the skull, she went down, she was unconscious, she had vertebrae damage, and um, people like him supported it, and lied about her spitting, like, and lied about a whole bunch of other shit, including the fact that she was a threat. She was this little woman, and this fucking Proud Boy cuck smacked her in the back of the head with a piece of wood, with a club. You don't smack somebody in the back of the head if they're attacking you. They're not attacking you if they're facing away so that you can smack them in the back of the head. But she, yeah. you know, so all this stuff is obvious, but they're not, they're commies, so they're not people, so they can't have property, so they're subhuman, so they're all this shit. So it's okay whenever anything happens to them. And now that a bunch of cops are beating the commies in the same way, these same sorts of people are like acting the same sort of way about them it's asinine yeah. you can't claim to care about self-ownership of the state violating your body as your own property is going to like not going to bother you yeah no you're you are a thousand percent correct and uh you know it's i i will say i have received a, a bit of support for you know the you know the the issues that i've taken with sal but i've seen a lot more uh of the intellectual hypocrisy of people mm -hmm. um, again with the dehumanization and, and, and saying that, well, they don't believe this or uh, probably my favorite that I've seen is, well, you know, they wanted the state they're getting the state I'm like, no, that doesn't make, make it right. You know, they still have rights, you know, even if they are adamantly against philosophically speaking, private property as, as capitalists understand it, as I understand it to be, even if they're adamantly against that, if they have it and they wish to defend it, yeah, that's a hypocritical stance for them to take, but that does not justify the use of force against their property. We need to be intellectually consistent throughout everything. And even though we may philosophically disagree, like as much as humanly possible, disagree on, on our philosophies, that doesn't give us the right to uh to violate their rights that we believe that they have as you know ancaps or voluntarists or uh libertarians or whatever rights are rights they are not privileges granted dependent upon your philosophy or the decisions that you make they are rights they are inherent to you full stop i don't care uh and and we need to get we need to step up and stop with the dehumanization of our fellow person because of philosophical differences. Yeah, let's have the debate. Let's have the discussions. Let's let's get into it as, as much as we need to until we're blue in the face. But at the end of the day, we need to realize that person is a person. They have a family. They have loved ones. They have people that care about them. And we need to have that little bit of empathy to understand that. Even though we disagree with them, we think that their philosophical philosoph philosophy is ass backwards and is garbage and is you know advocating for theft and totalitarianism doesn't matter they are still human beings and they still have the same rights as you do and you need to defend them as much as you defend your own well and and also like to to be clear the vast argentina like i just shared a tweet from uh, from mike bobby um because it's it's dead on uh, like, I've had my disagreements disagreements with them, like, straight up, but, like, this is good. He says, Sir, those are mostly normies and not communists. Argentina wasn't communist. The police weren't serving them before either. That's, that's, the, that's the reality. The reality is these right. people probably aren't communists. They probably just don't like the fact that they're 
currency doesn't buy what it used to. Sound familiar to anybody in America? No, no, no. Like, <laughs> nobody here complains about that. Nobody here complains that their rent is skyrocketing. Nobody here complains that, that they're, like, being pushed out of the job or that the prison industrial complex is rearing up or that they're being run by a fascist. Nobody here has any complaints of a similar variety. Not like we could be forming solidarity with these people instead of assuming that they're even bad to begin with. Like, I don't think they are. Even a lot of the communists there are ANCOMs. So they're on our right. side. Like, we could have yeah. solidarity, but instead people are assuming that they're just the worst people. And that's like the roots of the dehumanization. If you can just assume that the people uh, opposite you are like opposite you in every way, then it makes it a whole lot easier to justify any sort of violence to them because clearly you're the good guy and these are just the evil demons crawling up from the sewers to be evil demons. Yeah. And, you know, here's another thing. Let's let's think back to the uh, Black Lives Matter protests of 2020. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, I participated in, in a couple of those. Good. Uh, I, I showed up in uh, in Fort Worth uh, to march with BLM because I recognized that the BLM movement is completely different than the Black Lives Matter organization. Uh, the overwhelming majority of these protests were locally organized and not funded like from Soros, like a lot of people think uh, the, the organization might get some funding from Soros. But these organ the, these protests were locally organized and I showed up. I had a Hawaiian shirt on. I had my uh, my plate carrier on uh, and I had my AR with me. You know, I was in a full kit because I didn't want anything bad to happen. Mm -hmm. uh, and I showed up. The uh, One of the organizers came up to me. He's like, hey, man are we good? Or I'm like, yeah, I'm here with y'all. I goes, cool. Welcome. I'm glad that you're here. Uh, you know, let us know if there's anything like he was incredibly welcoming to me. There were also people there that were straight up communists. I could tell that they were because they were wearing like sickle and hammer shirts and, and things like that. And I get the optics, but I still marched with them because we were marching in opposition to police brutality, which is something that we should all agree is a bad thing. Mm hmm. And, you know, and if we think just a, a little a couple of months later after this is when the whole Garrett Foster thing happened and people justifying that whole clusterfuck. Yeah, I was in his same shoes, you know, now, granted, this wasn't the state who murdered him. It was it was well, <laughs> he was military, but he wasn't acting in his official capacity. Uh, but, you know, had cops had had I been protesting with them and cops turned it violent, people would assume that I am some sort of commie as well, even though I am the furthest thing from a commie philosophically, because I'm there protesting a specific reason. And that reason is something that we all agree on. And so, you know, uh, Bread Pirate is probably absolutely correct. They're not all commies. We're just go you know, labeling that because that's what the video says they are. They're all commies. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that's we the problem have... with Twitter, like hugely social media is widely, but Twitter especially, because you got to get all these fucking short ass sound bites. You've got to make sure that this thing fits in very small tweets with very small information. So that incentivizes people who don't want to include the full full fucking story. They don't want to include the fact that Javier Malay is literally engaging fascism and economic economic warfare against the lowest classes. They don't want to talk about the fact that Javier Malay is supported by an international cabal, including the literal state of Israel. They don't want to talk about the fact that Javier Malay is a, a globalist trying to force people onto, like, IMF, World Bank bullshit. They don't care about any of that. You know what they want? They want their fucking government forced, and he's helping force it. So when it comes down to it, these people are fundamentally anti-liberty, and that's why they don't want other people to be able to speak their mind. They're totally fine with people like Pinochet because he was doing what they want to, what they what they would do. They would join Pinochet's cabinet tomorrow if it was available to them, um, working with Nazi pedo Paul Schaefer and all. Um, 
Which, it's fucking hilarious when, like, just a sidebar, whenever any of these people claim that, the, oh, we don't like Epstein, or, oh, the, the groomer is in LGBT, but then they'll support Pinochet, who literally had a Nazi pedophile running a camp that tortured and raped boys and girls, men and women, fucking occasionally with dogs. Uh, like, shut the fuck up. You don't actually oppose fucking pedophilia or any of that shit. You're, you're just as degenerate as the degenerates are. You're just fucking, like, you know, good at lying about it. So people don't, like, press about it. They don't look into it any further, and they don't figure out that you're full of shit. So it's like, these people would work with Paul Schaefer tomorrow, Pinochet tomorrow, if it was available to them. That's the thing. They would throw people out of helicopters if it was available as an option. And that's the reason that they're okay with it when, for instance, Garrett Foster was murdered. Because they would murder Garrett Foster if given the opportunity. They would drive into the crowd right. of protesters that they also don't like um, and feel entitled to run over. And when their car was surrounded by the crowd that they just drove it into, they would shoot somebody. They would do it. They would hop on pop. Yeah, and, and that's... Uh... God, there's so much there. Uh, I, I think probably one of the things I want to talk about is this notion that I've seen from a lot of people that blocking roads is aggression. No, the fuck it's not. If it's a privately owned road, then yes, because you're trespassing. But this is a, a quote unquote public road, which means that it was bought and paid for by the state's extortion, which means we all have the right to be there. And, uh, you know, the, the other aspect of this is if you're going to say that blocking roads is aggression, then you better, as sure as fuck, better condemn the French and German farmers and truckers mm -hmm. who were doing the exact same shit two weeks ago. Or the Canadians who they all rally behind. The Hong yeah, Kong, absolutely. right, motherfucker? Yeah, absolutely. And, and, and it's this... It's this intellectual hypocrisy that is really kind of destroying everything. And really what it amounts to is that it's it's indicative of the same problem as, uh, you know, Republicans and Democrats are. Most people do not critically think for themselves. If somebody that they admire says something, that is their opinion automatically. It yes, doesn't it matter is. if it flies in the face of their own philosophy. Cult of personality shit. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. And so, what? And and that's the what's hilarious is they'll ignore it when somebody says it during the thing that they're celebrating. Like all these motherfuckers sweating about their like porn memes, where they're like put Malay's speech on a computer or something while somebody's fucking like implying that that keeps them hard. Like, congratulations, <laughs> you you missed the part at the end of the WEF speech where Malay's li literally said that you you all are the real heroes, and fucking I'm with you. It's sort of like the, the, the Trumpers who claim that they don't like WEF and they don't like them commies in the uh, hyper-capitalist WEF. I think that's fucking hilarious. But they'll say that, <laughs> and then they'll ignore the thing where Trump was shaking Klaus Schwab's hand and saying, you're doing good work. So, like, these people are fundamentally unserious. Oh, we're anti-vax, but we'll support Trump when he put fucking Johnson & Johnson guy on stage. Right-wingers are fundamentally unserious about their own propositions. And so when yeah. you point that out, they lose grift money, they lose viewers, they lose support, they lose backing, they lose their institutional power. So they won't do it. They won't work with you if you're being too reasonable. They won't work with you if you're supporting the right people and, like, opposing the state. They won't work with you. They'll try to blackball you. They'll silence you. And this has been happening for a while now. Like, and then eventually... These motherfuckers will act on it. Like Justin Moan decapitated his dad because he thought he was the Messiah and entitled to be the president of the United States. And so he decapitated his dad, told a bunch of people to do the same thing, except if they're working for the state governments who are the good guys, um, because these people are statists. Uh, and, and, like, he's a decentralist. He wants the federal government gone. But you know what he, uh, he, he did in order to make this happen? He strengthened the power of the federal government by being dumb as fuck and then posting it on YouTube. The, the, the federal government will have a field day because of this. And it's sort of the same with the January 6th bullshit, where 
the uh, the the fucking guys went went up on like, the capital and threw a tantrum that was ineffective and didn't do anything but mean that they increased security and put a bunch of people on watch lists and justified a bunch of backrooms meetings in the intelligence agencies saying this is who your enemy is this is who we should be considering domestic terrorists congratulations a bunch of you were in prison now a bunch of you were oppressed by the FBI because you did the wrong thing and while that was happening hey. You know what? Uh, for some reason, a lot of the same people who say that the J6 protesters were victims of police brutality and undue government corruption, those people are celebrating the same police violence happening to these protesters, despite these protesters just being in the street and not even in a government building. So it's like all of these people are okay with what they want when it happens to other people. But when it happens to them, when they get the meal they ordered, it's suddenly a problem. It's it's the same shit with, like, the, the border protests. Like, oh, yes, government does stuff. That's socialism. But, you know, when the government puts razor wire in the water, we have to go down to Texas to defend their right to self-defense. It's fucking asinine. Yeah. It, it, it is. It is incredibly asinine. And, and um, you know, it kind of, you know, I will I will give kind of credit where it's due. There is a little bit of consistency here between those two types. You have the people that um, are saying, well, commies aren't people, so therefore it's okay to invoke violence against them. And then you also say have the same people that are like, well, immigrants don't have a right to be here, uh, so therefore it's, it's perfectly okay to invoke violence against them. And it's like, hang on, um, are rights inherent to every human being or are they just inherent to people that you like uh, or people that you agree with? Mm -hmm. And it, it's... It, they they also do this wonderful thing where they try and justify well we need closed borders because they take tax benefits cool that is a valid grievance that they take tax benefits that they're actually legally not entitled to but that's also like punishing the bar owner for the drunk driver causing a wreck uh, because you're not going after the root cause of the problem. You're, you're, you're putting a Band-Aid on it that is actually more tyrannical and antithetical to liberty than anything else. The root cause of this is, is taxation. You know, if, you, if the government stopped stealing money from people, then they wouldn't have tax benefits to pay for, for anyone. And not to mention that of you know, the, the undocumented immigrants that do get uh, tax benefits... It, on the high end estimates, it's about $100 billion a year. You know what natural born citizens get? About, I think, three or four trillion dollars. That's federal and state that, the, that they're receiving. Yeah. So who's the bigger suck? Is it the immigrant that's traveling and not harming anybody? Or is it the natural born citizen that somehow is magically more loyal? Well, and, and you know, what's interesting about that is, you know... <laughs> These people like that that talk about that particular issue, they're so often like ignoring the fact, and this is a fact, that those people are very often workers. They're very often working. They're like yeah. they're putting money into the system and they're doing jobs. Like, how can you simultaneously say that this is an invading army taking our jobs without also saying that they're working? If they're not working, they're not taking your jobs. You've got to pick a struggle. Yeah, and and, and uh, you know if if you're really capitalist about it, um, they're taking jobs that have scarcity that nobody is filling. Mm -hmm. So really, you're advocating for more interjection into the market by the state, um, or you know they're taking these jobs at a lower wage yeah that's the that's the that's what happens whenever competition and scarcity happen if nobody's filling this job and somebody does come over and say hey i'll do it for x amount and they agree to that well guess what they have they have met that agreement and you can't be upset with that you may as well advocate for a minimum wage yeah and and that's the it's economically illiterate and that's the thing like so I wrote this down the other day. I wrote, uh, posted this as a series of tweets because I'm not going to pay for Twitter Blue or X Pro or I don't care what it calls. Uh, border cuck libertarians tip their hand quickly. 
No, but you see, we can't have open or no borders. We have a welfare state. And I said, but these losers employ the political system. If it works as stated, they need the common person on their side to get elected. Then they hit a hitch. If they want to be populist, they have to get the common person on their side. They can't with do that with the migrants they claim vote or the Democrats they claim vote with the migrants. So they side against Dems and minorities as a block. This means they need the white right wing. If border cock libertarians uh, try to convince that sort of person by suggesting cutting VA benefits, social security, and firing most government jobs, including superfluous military empire, only used to fuel the muddied interests, not only do they not get campaign bucks, but no votes either. Thanks for playing. Like, these people aren't going to say, hey, veteran, you veteran, uh, the... I'm not just going to be anti-war. I'm also going to steal your paycheck from you. I'm going to take your 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 money that you get every month, your stipend, your your uh, your benefits package. I'm going to take that and your health care and all of this stuff. I'm going to take that. Um, and like, are you still going to vote for me? Probably not. They're probably not going to support you. So instead of doing that, instead of just biting the bullet and saying, you know what? Uh, the first welfare people who should be barred their welfare are the people who spread the American empire. Uh, they said, we'll just go after brown people who have no power at all and who have not helped the power structure pretty much any. And we'll pretend that by virtue of being here, they're somehow voting Democrat automatically and automatically are a problem because of that. Um, they'll pretend that in order to pretend that they're doing something like about these terrible invading migrant forces uh, who are taking our jobs and sponging off the welfare system. But they'll not do the same thing for the people who are enabling the power that enables the welfare system. No, Nobody is going to get into office, with very few exceptions, usually on a very local level, certainly nothing national, by saying, I'm going to cut your VA benefits and uh, cut, like, cut your government health care veterans. I'm going to, yeah. like, remove your government-paid housing uh, that you use in order to not be homeless after serving the country, veteran. They're not going to do that, but they are going to do it with the people who have never helped murder people on the behest of the U.S. government. They'll never, they'll, they'll never do it with the people who made the power structure because those people got told afterwards that they, they did the right thing. And they got told afterwards that they did the right thing and given a bunch of money on a routine basis. And they have been collecting welfare a lot longer than most migrants have. But that doesn't matter to these people. These people aren't here to stop no. welfare. No, these are, people aren't like they're, they're, they're not going to say that if you work in Congress, you can't uh, you can't trade stocks. They're not going to say that if you that if you're a president, uh, you can't have family involved in your businesses that would benefit from your presidential action, that would hit both Biden and Trump. They're not going to say that the vast system of corruption is a problem. They're going to say that because these people are coming here, that they present an, uh, an existential threat. And that's the, that's the grift. That's the grift. It's like when they say, for instance, that, um, that LGBT are groomers. Um, but they ignore that the vast majority of groomers are not, in fact, LGBT and also are known to the victim, are trusted by the victim, and therefore usually a heterosexual that's in the family or known to the family. They'll say all this shit about, like, oh, we oppose groomers, but they won't oppose Nick Fuentes, who wants an untouched, pristine 16-year-old, innocent girl. They won't say the same thing about Matt Walsh, who says that 16-year-olds are adults and should be able to be fucked. They won't say the same thing to most of the people doing this shit, because if you get consistent, you lose support. Yeah. Uh, well, I, I mean, it's, it's all political theater, right? I mean, they have to do whatever they can to maintain power. Um, and... So their messaging is important, and uh, Malay has proven that he is not an exception to this uh, with what's going on and, and the, the, you know, everything down there, just like every other politician here. And, uh, you know, this ideal uh, idolization and uh, or, or I guess it would be idolatry uh, of other people who don't know you exist 
uh, is, is it needs to stop. It, it really does. Like, um, you know, we need to become more self aware and self sufficient and self governing. And, uh, you know, I will, I, the, the, the main issue just re re revolves around the, the, the centralized state anyway. After, at the end of the day, Malay is a head of state, and he is therefore, and always will be, the enemy. Until he abolishes the Argentinian state, which I do not believe he will do, otherwise he would have done it already, um, you know, he's going to be the enemy no matter what. He might do some beneficial things from a statist standpoint, but that doesn't make him any less of a statist. I know he des he describes himself as an anarcho-capitalist, and maybe philosophically, personally, he is, but he continues to use the state uh, to do what he does. And that's intellectually inconsistent, just like everything else. And we need to stop making excuses for these people. We need to stop putting them up on pedestals and Id idolizing them. Um, you know, uh, we need to we need to just be real about what's actually happening and uh you know maybe maybe a little bit of empathy towards our fellow man wouldn't hurt either yeah and and like you know maybe just accept a little bit of a rule of thumb here that anyone who wants to unleash the cops is not a libertarian that anybody who supports yeah. the state and wants it to be more extreme not less is not here for anarchist principles Anyone who is 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 in support of like a foreign government doing that would also be in support of a domestic government beating the fuck out of January six protesters or something similar. Like yeah. these people, like, they're showing their colors right now and so many people still don't think they're venomous. But they're snakes and they should be treated as snakes. Yeah, absolutely. A hundred percent. And, um, you know, while I, 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 again, while I adamantly disagree with, um, you know, people that are the people that are protesting down there, like we need to, we need to stop dehumanizing one another. It, it just, it, it's got to stop. And if you're, if you're cheering, if you find yourself cheering on cops, I mean, unless they saved a cat from a tree, there's no reason to do that. Yeah, and, well, and, like, I don't even disagree with the reasons, because here's the thing, like, Javier Malay, he's, like, he's doing shock doctrine. The whole point of shock doctrine, uh, anybody who's read Naomi Klein can confirm this, the whole point of shock doctrine is to make people so desperate economically that they cling to your structures. It's to, you know, remove their power to resist your government, your economic structures, your whatever. Um, and the reason that these people all like have the same sort of aesthetic of murdering people they don't like is because they're totally fine with that sort of thing. They're totally fine with like dehumanization because they had to do that in order to, to get where they're going to begin with. And so when these people, for instance, you know, like Malay, uh, he wants to make it easier to lock up children. He wants to lower the threshold for putting children in prison. He wants to make it easier to lock up like more common criminals. He wants to do that while creating more criminals with a war on drugs. He wants to do that while coding the state in facial recognition cameras and mili uh, creating a militarized police force to, to create a militarized transition process. He, he wants to do all of this. Mm -hmm. He said this in his platform, and he also supports... Uh, and and like says that the the miracle of Chile is something to mimic, is something to imitate, and so he supports Pinochet, and he also named his dogs after the Chicago boys. And by the way, he also talks to one of them and gets economic advice from them because he thinks he's talking to a dog. Like this is a fundamentally <laughs> unhinged person, and he's like a fascist, insane motherfucker. But these people like him because he came up with a chainsaw on stage and said that the leftists are shit. And in, as yeah. a result, what he's done is create the shock effects on the economy that have spiraled a huge amount of people already oppressed by the economic conditions 
further down the spiral. These people already had like these terrible economic conditions that made them want change to begin with. So what do you do? You have the value of the domestic currency and you allow them to make contracts in foreign currency, thus doubling the price of things with the existing savings. If any American president did that, there would be calls for the gallows. But the, oh, yeah. But this guy is doing that, and uh, Americans who would be calling for the gallows, if that was the case, are sucking his cock and saying, we love these cops. These cops are great. The, yeah. You know? And so what, I, I, I am on their side. These protesters are right. Yeah. And, and what's the uh, what's the saying? There's a common... Um libertarian and handcap saying it's oh that's right good ideas don't require force right mm -hmm. and um you know wh uh, while <laughs> i i would never in a million years force somebody to adopt my ideology i i just wouldn't uh i would show them why it's better and that's not what malay is doing yeah and even and his own actions, uh, you know, are, are are antithetical to that to begin with, because some of them are bad ideas, like having the currency and then saying that, uh, you know, effectively doubling rents and, and, and things like that, because, and using the state's authority to do that. And here's the thing. I absolutely detest, like, legal tender laws. I think people should be free to trade in whatever mm -hmm. uh, medium of exchange they want to. And so... It sounds good on its face, uh, and it sounds somewhat libertarian on its face until you realize the semantics behind it that, uh, well, you're effectively causing inflation yes. in a different way. And hooking their that's, country up to the central bank of the U.S. Like, that's anti—that's that's, that's pro-Federal Reserve. It's just pro-ours. Yeah, yeah. It, 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 it's anti-Argentinian central bank, pro-U.S. Federal Reserve. Yeah, like it, they're literally enabling the Fed and a bunch of fucks who claim Ron Paul was their god are, say, are, are disavowing him, are being apostates in saying that we should support the Fed as long as it's our Fed. What? I thought we wanted to end our Fed, but if we did, Argentina couldn't dollarize and they would have to, you know, what? Pull themselves up by their bootstraps and do it themselves? Damn, that would be libertarian or something. Yeah, you know what you know what would actually have been a libertarian move is if instead of that, Malay said we're revealing all legal tender laws. You can deal in whatever you want, including cryptocurrency. Yep. Um, and Metals, anything. You know, yeah. So so if you want to pay your rent in gold, or if you want to accept rent in gold or silver or or Bitcoin or Ethereum or fucking Doge, doesn't matter. You have the right to do that. But that's not what he did. And you know. That's a far more free market solution and libertarian solution than anything that, you know, has been done so far. Yeah, it's cool and all that you do that you abolish your central bank. Good move. Uh, tying your currency to the U.S. Federal Reserve, U.S. Central Bank. Horrible fucking move. I don't know what you were fucking thinking there. Also, he it makes no really, sense. Like, fully abolish his central bank while having the value of the peso. Like you kind of need central economic control in order to do that. Yeah, absolutely. And the again, the solution to that is just get rid of the legal tender laws and let people, you know, use whatever medium of exchange they want. If they want to fucking pay, if, if you're cool with your tenant paying rent in uh, Monopoly money, uh, then you have at it, man. But uh, but he still has the legal tender laws in, in, in effect, and he's using, uh, you know, he's using the U.S. dollar. He's basically just adding that to. If, if, if correct me if I'm wrong, he's basically just adding the U.S. dollar to their legal tender laws, right? Basically, yeah, At, and, and yeah, and then of course he will be dollarizing, which means that the entire economy will have to run on dollars. It's not just including that. At that point, it's also like actively saying that the the U.S. dollar will be your currency now, and the peso won't. Once the transition is complete, they will be completely dependent on the U.S. economy and the U.S. like every industrial complex that keeps it afloat. Yeah, eh. and not that the U.S. economy is anything to really to brag about. I guess certainly from Argentina, Argentina's perspective it is, but we're not exactly doing great up here. Mm-hmm.
Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, I mean, we're still dealing with very high inflation, you know, counter, contrary to the wordsmithing that our elected officials like to use. Yeah. And like, you know, prices are still going up here. Yeah. And like, that's why he has to support Israel. That's why he has to support the the uh, the the Western alliances with their financial institutions. That's why he wants to get them hooked up onto international monetary systems and loans and shit, because he's doing the same thing Pinochet did near the end without, you know, as much of the central state violence yet. Possibly, uh, we'll see. We'll see if he pulls a full Pinochet. But like. He's doing what Pinochet was doing near the end, it hooking them into the global financial apparatus. And so, like, he, w when he's doing that, uh, he's basically saying, yeah, you know all the work you've done in order to make ends meet? It, the, the common Argentinian, you know, you know how you've worked your fucking ass off in order to even barely break even in this shit-ass economy? Now your money is worth half of what it was. And now you have yeah. half as much savings, half as much to spend at the store, half as much to spend on rent, half as much of if any American president did that, especially in order to hook them into a global economy and force them onto the industrial complexes of the the West, uh, like there would be exactly zero opposition in libertarian circles to redacted. Yeah. And the thing is, libertarians, anarchists, we all acknowledge that taxation is theft, extortion, violence, all the things. And we also acknowledge that inflation is the most insidious tax ever conceived because it is so hidden. Yes. And yet here we are celebrating it. Yeah. And people like Sal that, should be opposed to this. Yeah, absolutely. But I, instead, I, commies I, get bloody. So ooh, I'm going to fucking get viscerally emotional about this and ignore any and all reasoned opposition. Yeah. And you know, I, part of me and I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to kind of detract just a little bit and, and defend him just ever so slightly uh, because I understand that he's kind of built a brand and that he's probably doing this more for clicks and engagement than for anything else. That to me is not something that I would do. Uh, I find that to be hypocritical, just like any other uh, figurehead or talking head that we have that will not change their views about anything because they made their name off of the mainstream uh, political ideology. Um, I won't do that. I'm never going to do that. I, if that is in fact, what's going on, going on i can say that i understand it i think it's fucking wrong i think that we should not do that and should not act that we should stand on our principles even if that, that means we lose followers even if that means that we piss people off because we're not we're going against the mainstream yeah um but at least i can understand it what? that's the if that is the case then i can at least say i understand why sal is doing it doesn't mean i agree with it that doesn't mean i think it's a good idea in fact i think the opposite but i can at least understand it that is as far as i will go to defend him well and and so even in that case like because i do think that's what's happening i think that this whole thing is a grift i've been calling it the anti-woke grift for a while now um and mm -hmm. i think that this whole thing is a grift and i think that he's been engaged in the grift um and i think that so many other people are because it's not about numbers like, sorry, it's not about principles. It's about numbers. Like, it's about getting those yeah. numbers. And if it is, then you can hook getting those numbers into the financial aspect of it. You can hook those numbers into, like, um, fucking getting paid, selling shirts, getting Patreon bucks, selling books, getting yeah. speaking engagements, all this shit. And if you can do that successfully, then you can market yourself and get engaged in the same circles that all of these other marketers have also marketed themselves like okay a few people jocelyn glaybach or the red-headed libertarian well known for being mm. a piece of shit in actual anarchist and libertarian circles gets very very strong play from uh conservatives because she's affiliated with the tim pool crowd um 
And yeah. she can consistently lie about being a libertarian while supporting the most boilerplate conservative bullshit. And she even lied that I doxed her once and sent like thousands of people after me over this because I called her Jocelyn when she wrote an article alongside Ian Miles Chung for Reagan's favorite newspaper and uh, like called herself Jocelyn in that fucking article. Like she said that this is by Jocelyn Glaybach. And so when I said that, she falsely accused me of doxing her because I don't go by that name, but you do. And, like, she worked with Ian Miles Chong. That was one of her first mistakes. You shouldn't do that if you actually support liberty. But she doesn't. Um, and that's why she's also working with Tim Poole, who's your run-of-the-mill uh, pseudo fash conservative. Um, and that's also why uh, these people are willing to work with whoever supports political violence until those people actually talk about it on their stream, in which case Tim Pool took down the entire Jesse Kelly episode because he, sa he started to say exactly what these right away fucks wanted them to say. And so, like, that's who these people are. And, like, gradually becoming affiliated with these people um, is a mistake for authentic liberty. But these people don't mind making that mistake because it's briefly profitable. For instance, Creation247, the art of purpose here on Twitter, he, uh, he does fucking hack trad memes. And while he's not like, while he's advocating alcoholism because alcoholics built great societies, I'm not making that up. He's also straight up lying about the conditions in many societies. And he's straight up like incorrect about many of his assertions. But he just churns out the memes and doesn't respond to criticism. Or Matt Wallace on Twitter here being like a liar routinely. Just absolute lies. Just an absolute fire hose of misinformation. Um, but he doesn't care because Elon Musk occasionally boosts his tweets. So these people don't care about principles. They're here for numbers. So it doesn't matter how many of us fact check them. It doesn't matter how wrong they are. What matters is they're getting numbers and money. They don't give a shit. Yeah. Um, you know, the thing is, I would suspect, and I don't know this to be true, maybe one day I will, uh, whenever I have that level of influence, if it should happen, but I feel like they will get more interaction, more money, more gigs, more whatever, if they were constantly being intellectually honest and not just repeating the mainstream. Maybe. Maybe there's a market because, for that. Uh, <laughs> I mean, I, you know, s since the whole Texas immigration bullshit and then this, you know, I've received my fair share of hate from people that follow me that used to love me. Uh, and I've lost followers of it. But I've also gained more. Like, my, tr my follower trend has gone up uh, despite the fact that I've been losing a few followers who disagree with me on this one issue. And here's the thing, like from, from Sal's standpoint or, or anybody else's, I don't care if I agree with you on everything. I don't need to agree with you on everything. Uh, in fact, it, it would be weird if we did agree on literally everything. Yeah. I routinely tell people, Please but don't at, at, be exactly like me. I fuck up a lot. <laughs> I mean, same, right? Uh, I, but the thing is, like, whenever it's pretty obvious that you're just doing this for clicks and you're not maintaining intellectual honesty or even having that conversation, uh, you know, you're 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 not being honest with yourself and with your followers. Uh, you know, I I would love, honestly, like, I, I would love it if Sal and I could have a space and and actually talk this through. But I don't think that he would ever engage in that because. I don't think that he really means what he posts and he's just doing it for clicks. I mean what I post and that's why, I'm, you know, uh, you know, I'm, I'm not as, you know, not as great as he is, I guess. Yeah. Well, and, and I've been gradually losing play for years because I call literally everyone out like left, right, center, yeah. up, down. It doesn't matter to me if you're wrong, you're wrong. And a lot of these people are wrong. Like, for instance, just yesterday, I accurately called out Clint Russell for supporting Thaddeus Russell and Eliza Blue and claiming to oppose grooming. Um, because Thaddeus Russell and Eliza Blue both think that there are contexts in which adults should be able to decide a child is ready to have sex with one. 
And Thaddeus Russell specifically says 13-year-olds should be able to fuck their professor for better grades if that, like, 13-year-old is ready. And that you should ask the 13-year-old if they are. Fucking, that's insane. That's absolutely nuts. And Thaddeus Russell also has had a stream with a guy named Stephen Kirshner, where this guy is a professor, Stephen Kirshner, not a stream, full-on video, recorded video. Uh, where Stephen Kirshner and he were gigglingly talking about how adult child sex isn't that bad. And Thaddeus Russell gets massive play in libertarian circles, and if you point it out in certain circles, they will block you. I was blocked by Jose Gallison of the Tower Gang podcast, because I, mm. uh, I, I pointed out that Thaddeus Russell wrote an article defending Roman Polanski, rapist, pedophile Roman Polanski, and I, and I posted this link to this article and got blocked and thus removed from a uh, quote-unquote anarchist chat, which, let's be real, it wasn't. It was full of a bunch of right-wingers who wanted numbers, and that's why I got removed, because they didn't care yeah. that I was right. They didn't care that Thaddeus Russell's a piece of shit. They just wanted me gone. And it's like that. It's like that with that fucking... And supporting Andrew Tate, another thing that Clint Russell does, routinely. But he blocked me, and people are pretending I'm wrong about this. People are pretending I'm wrong, despite, like, even after I posted a long fucking thread proving that Clint Russell simps for Andrew Tate and considers him a solution to absentee fathers. Forgive me if I'm, like, ignorant here. I don't think that, like... Grooming a 15-year-old girl until she's old enough to work for your sex camera business is a solution to absentee fathers. In fact, I think an absentee father was probably required to make that employee happen. Yeah, that's that's really fucked up. <laughs> that's super fucked up, man. Um, I I really I, I I don't know what to say about that. That's. I, I I I'm kind of at a loss for words here. That's insane to me that that this is what we as you know libertarians and anarchists we're supposed to be like the intellectually superior type because we've yeah. broken away from the mainstream and yet we don't actually do that. No, some of us do, uh, but by and large, I, I mean it seems just like more of the same shit, um, and that's sad. It, it it's it shouldn't be that way. We should absolutely just, you know, uh, be intellectually consistent. If somebody who we respect and admire does some fucked up shit, we should, con uh, we should criticize them. We should condemn whatever it is that they do. Uh, that's what being intellectually honest and intellectually consistent is. But we don't for whatever reason, obviously I'm using we generally, but, uh, it's it's pretty fucked up and it's pretty indicative of you know the human, uh, I guess the <laughs> the human race, if you will, uh, as to where we stand and that we rely on leaders for some strange fucking reason. We don't need them. Uh, we rely on leaders even whenever we say we don't, and that's what's sad. Yeah. Well, my old deal is like, and I'm glad we had this conversation. Anybody who wants to follow either of us is, is encouraged to, um, and I do follow back, but the whole thing here is I, I've been, I've been saying a lot of the same shit for a long time and getting like more and more ejected from Liberty circles, more and more forced out because these people want the numbers. They weren't here because they wanted liberty. They weren't here because they universally opposed various industrial complexes or, you know, pedophilia or any other terrible thing. There were a lot of them here so that they could make numbers and make those numbers translate into money. And the fact that, like, Dave Chappelle had this whole thing where he said that, like, when he was real young, he saw that a guy was, like, you know, fucking in on a hustle like he was trying to hustle people on the street and when when he pointed out that the that the guy like just took the ball and it wasn't under any cup um the, the guy pulled him aside and threatened him if he like got between a man and his meal and that's exactly what it is you get between a man and his meal and he will fuck you up even if he was going to get his meal by unethical means 
And so, like, a lot of these people operate the exact same way, the exact same kind of way that they claim the welfare whores do. And they behave in the same way because they are totally willing to threaten people, to, like, to lie about people, to do whatever unethical thing they have to in order to maintain their income flow at the levels at which it is or increase it. And they operate in the same way as a state does, but without official state backing. And that's why these people, when they get in charge, operate exactly like the state does. That's why they're willing to censor you. That's why they're willing to try and push you out. That's why they're willing to try and, you know, get all of their people against you. Because they don't want to have an honest conversation. They don't want to stick to their principles. It's never been about that. Don't get between a man and his meal. That's what it's really about. Yeah. I mean, if you really break it all down, uh, that is what it's about. If, uh, you know, Argentina has already suffered an astronomical level of inflation and it just doubled um, by Malay's actions, of course people are going to be pissed off because you just stood between them and their meal. Yeah. Um, and, you know, uh, that that's not okay. And people have a right to be pissed off. doesn't matter if they're commies or not. doesn't matter if they're uh, grouping with commies and are not commie or not. Uh, you know, people have a right to be pissed off whenever their livelihood is disrupted, when, you know, whenever the state does it. And, um, you know, I, it's sad. I'm, I'm, I'm a bit disheartened if I'm, if I'm being completely honest, I'm a bit disheartened at some of the discourse that's been happening around what's happening in, in, in Argentina right now. And, uh, Especially whenever, you know, <laughs> that post that I made that said, stop dehumanizing commies, be better than they are. Um, you know, it's, I've gotten a lot of responses that are just disheartening that, well, they're, we are, we're better than them by default because they're not human. Like, okay. You are, you are literally advertising that you're a genocidal maniac. Um, and, you know, people, people quoting Hoppe. Uh, as a means of justification, um, you know, I have respect for Hoppe, but he's wrong whenever it comes to uh, disassociating with people for superfluous reasons. And um, while in your community uh, might want to enact things until they actually do, they're not a threat. Um, you know, that, that it goes back to that direct threat of, against your liberty and um as far as everything that i can see again i'm not there i'm not on the ground i don't know what's actually happening in argentina but from what i can see and what is publicly available um these people did not bring harm to anyone most of them some of them like, like i said somebody had mentioned that they had stolen a homeless man's bed, uh, mattress and set it on fire that's that's different of course those individuals were different to be clear but, like they also said that they were that 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 like Palestinians were burning Israeli babies, and that's later been proven to be propaganda. So this could be more of that. But like, go on. Yeah, I I did see a picture of a burning mattress in the middle of the street, and so it seems to give some credit to that. But even still, those individuals who did that and participated in that is different from enacting tyranny carte blanche against everybody who's assembling. If you're going to defend, you need to defend from the individual. And you can't, you can't just group everyone together because they're in a group and say, oh, well, this person invoked violence, so I'm going to invoke violence against all of you. You mean um, alleged anti-collectivists can't be collectivist? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Who'd have thunk it, right? Yeah, and like that uh, as well as like being objectively like – if you think your ideas are so good that they can be marketed, then market them. And also, um, if the ANCO if the ANCOMs are wrong, that like as soon as ANCAPs or libertarians or whatever right wing blah blah are se seize power, they're going to become tyrants. Uh, if they're wrong, stop proving them right. Yeah, no kidding. Um, you know, individuals commit commit acts of aggression. Groups do not. There could be people in that group who are entirely benign and invoking aggression against them because others in that group did, you know, uh, are aggressing against you. You're you're not doing it right. 
Yeah. And th- that's why you have to take everything at an individual level and you need to be intellectually consistent. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Well, anyway, I think this is a thing that should happen again. Um, we can cover some other stuff next time, but I think this one specifically has run its course. Y'all should follow ANCAP Air. Feel free to follow both this account and my alt. Um, and if you turn on notifications on the alt, you'll probably get notifications for this sort of stream. So if that seems like something you would be into, then feel free to do that. Um, Fleshin in comments says, Millet is using dollar to close the central bank. His proposal is to end legal tender and let people choose what to use. I mean, maybe, if you believe him. I don't. I have no reason to believe that. And also, like, ending the, the central bank... Um, by using the dollar is a contradiction in terms. He's just choosing a bigger central bank with more allegedly reliable currency. So I don't think that that's the case. I think that like it's very much one of those things where it's a ploy. So that's that's my stance. I, I, if, if you were waiting for an answer to that, I apologize. I just saw that there was a chat message. But uh, yeah, uh, if anybody has anything that they want to say in chat, uh, to get addressed, then feel free, um, because we will be wrapping it up soonish. But like, I'm I'm able to answer some questions before then. Um, and if this is your first time on one of my spaces, hey, congratulations! This is one of my first spaces. So um, if uh, if you want to hear more of this, feel free to follow this account and um, like both both of my Jeremiah accounts here. Um, in order to make sure that you get access to the next one. Um, but, like, yeah, I think I think this one d- did a relatively good job of proving the points, uh, that the liberty movement needs to be a lot more focused on being a liberty movement and not being a capitalism movement at all costs. Because if, yeah. you, if you're a state capitalist, like, you know, Murray Rothbard put it really fucking well. Murray Rothbard wrote against state capitalism, and he had this excellent quote that I occasionally bring up, especially when people are going to be like cucks about capitalism in general. Um, and I think it's a valuable thing to remember. Um, so I'll, I'll read this here. If we are to ter- keep the term capitalism at all, then we must distinguish between free market capitalism on the one hand and state capitalism on the other. The two are as different as day and night in their nature and consequences. Free market capitalism is a network of free and voluntary exchanges in which producers work, produce, and exchange their products for the products of others through prices voluntarily arrived at. Um, State capitalism consists of one or more groups making use of the coercive apparatus of the government of the state to accumulate capital for themselves by expropriating the production of others by force and violence. Throughout history... Um, states have existed as instruments for organized predation and exploitation. It doesn't much matter which group of people happen to gain control of the state at any time, whether it be oriental despots, kings, landlords, privileged merchants, uh, army officers, or communist parties. The result is everywhere and always the coercive melting of the mass of the producers, in most centuries, of course, largely the peasantry, by a ruling class of dominant rulers and their higher professional bureaucracy. Generally, the state has its inception in naked banditry and conquest, after which the conquerors settle down among the subject population to, extra- uh, to exact permanent and continuing tribute in the form of taxation and to parcel out the land of the peasants in huge tracts to the conquering warlords who then proceed to extract rent. A modern paradigm is the Spanish conquest of Latin America, when the military conquest of the native Indian peasantry led to the parceling out of Indian lands to the Spanish families and the settling down of the Spaniards as a permanent ruling class over the native peasantry. He got it. So why can't all these other right libertarians get it? Oh, because that's inconvenient. Yeah, and is, what what he said was beautiful. Um, and, and it's so right. It, state capitalism is corporatism and uh corporatism is is evil it's actually more akin to socialism than anything else and it's it's evil and it should not be it shouldn't be uh it shouldn't exist and uh, it shouldn't be celebrated and i think that uh i i think that if you know 
like he said, if capital, if the if we're going to keep the term capitalism, you know, I'm okay with doing away with the term capitalism if it if it ends the confusion as to what I believe capitalism to be, whether that be you know adopting voluntarism or 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 market anarchism or individual anarchism, it doesn't doesn't really matter. Um, you know, uh, philosophically, it's the same as a free market. And if, if we're trying to use the state to, uh, to, um, to create a free market, then it, that's a completely antithetical position to what you're saying that you're trying to do. Uh, you're propping up companies that would fail. You're stealing people's money to prop up those companies. Uh, those companies might be enacting or engaging in things that, um, uh, create victims of their customer base that would otherwise go out of the free market, but uh, they are surviving because of the state or they're in cahoots with the state to enact laws that uh, crush competition. That is not a free market. That is not capitalism. That is corporatism and it's evil and should be uh, opposed by everyone. And if, if you're going to celebrate Malay uh, using corporatism, uh, then you're intellectually inconsistent. Yeah, and, like, there's a book that, like, I think, a little magazine anyway, that's a collection of articles and essays and shit. Um, and it's by, uh, it's well, it's it's edited by uh, Charles Johnson, I think is his name, and Gary Chartier. And um, these people, like, put out this little zine that included works from Rothbard um, called Markets Not Capitalism, and it's a little, like, thing where basically the case is made for not using the term capitalism to refer to free markets because it hasn't been. And to say that because we want free markets, it doesn't necessarily mean we're capitalists because many of us aren't. We don't own the means of production. And so, like, what, what it generally says um, is that, like, if we want the, like, the better future... We have to eschew the systems of old, and it lays out the case for market anarchism that uh, th that could very well, like as a term, replace even ANCAP. Um, and I think that that's like a, a, a sort of an interesting way to think about it, to say the least. Um, so, like, if anybody wants to read that, I put an archive link in the chat. Um, but also, uh, I've got some things to respond to here, so... Um, Juan Cruz says the central bank has debts. In what currency do you think those debts have to be settled? You have to do it then. Currency competition. Okay, first off, there's a such thing as Forex. If, like, you do, co like, actual dead level currency competition without uh, inflating the economy by devaluing the value of the peso, then you can have the Forex, like, exchanges fucking like convert it to the Argentinian peso so that the debt can be settled in that. I don't know what the problem with that would be, but like also uh, the hooking it up to a foreign fed doesn't help. It doesn't help remove this no. central bank's debts in this central bank. So I don't know how dollarization would help you settle that country's debts in that country's currency. It doesn't. What it does is it means that you, you, you don't have to address those debts. You don't have to because you can default because you're closing the central bank and then like the countries that don't like it can shove it because like that's what the U.S. is going to eventually have to do. It has way too much debt and way too little G GDP and way too many foreign entanglements and it's not going to work for the purposes and principles of liberty and it's certainly not going to draw itself down. It's not going to pay itself off. The debt doesn't matter to these people. It's just fun money that they can fungibly piss out of the like thin air. They don't care. It's never mattered. That's the point. Fiat currency is so that they don't have to care about the economy. They don't have to care about how like how much they're fucking us all over. They don't have to care because they can print it out of thin air. And so the central bank in Argentina is no different. It's just smaller and has less global power. So he's crushing that and attaching the economy to a new, bigger central bank. 
that's not actually going to help with the resolution of domestic <laughs> debts. I don't know how it fucking could. What, make you more prosperous so that all the people you froze out of the economy by cutting their savings in half, um, you know, so that all those people are frozen out and foreign investors come in and while your people go homeless, start to commit crimes and are shoved into your prison industrial complex, you can put those people in the houses they used to occupy because they can pay in dollars. Like, I don't understand how this isn't just transparent tyranny. Like, the best yeah, I, possible case is that you're creating a new tax cattle farm. Yeah, absolutely. And it is... It, that's asinine. It is absolutely asinine. And, you know, to... to to uh to to Juan's point, yes. Currently, debts need to be paid in the currency in which the terms were outlined, a as of the way that we live now. If this were truly a free market, you could negotiate the terms of that loan to in 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 include various different mediums of exchange, um, and uh, honestly, that's the way the all debts should be mm -hmm. uh and, and <laughs> that's that's not how the state works because the state needs its uh currency of issue to be uh, the denominating factor because well they're the currency issuer and therefore uh, um insert mmt bullshit here and of course they you know, get that, like seigniorage off every dollar printed which is why the u.s really wants this to happen they'll get a fucking payday yeah, uh, and you know, uh, so here's here's another question that that kind of just popped into my head. You know, I know that uh, Vivek has has said that he's explained the evils of, of CBD CDs to Donald Trump, um, but I don't I don't trust Trump to not institute a CBCD. And so, what's going to happen to Argentina? who is now tied to the Federal Reserve, if the Federal Reserve actually creates a CBCD. Oh, well, they'll um, be forced onto it if they're dollarized. And also, like, just to be clear, Trump said he doesn't like the World Economic Forum and then went and sucked their cock. Um, <laughs> and so, like, Trump said he's a gun rights guy and then said he likes to take the guns first and do due process second. Trump said he, uh, he he's anti-woke, but he supports, like, LGBT people in order to get them voting for him. And, like, that's a good thing. Good for you, Trump. Sister Slay, yeah. but at the same time, like, be honest about shit, and Trump isn't. He's a con man businessman. And, yeah. like, beyond that, Vivek is also a con man businessman. And if, you know, if you want to talk Soros, he literally had to, like, b go get a fucking Wikipedia editor paid because the Wikipedia editor was, like, uh, talking about how he was partially funded by a Soros linked fucking scholarship. Like, so. Vivek is a con artist. Vivek is a big pharma surveillance status. Vivek wants to militarize the border and attack Mexico. Vivek <laughs> is not a libertarian. He's anti-libertarian. He's part of the anti-woke grift being like, you know what the real problem is? Not the economy. Not the fact that we're tanking everything and building up the military industrial complex. Not the fact that we have like greater levels of incarceration and po like militarized police activity than ever. Not all of these like factors that actually concretely affect you or the, the fact that uh, like the, 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 the fucking productivity gap is ever wider. Not any of this shit. You know what really matters? Them trans people. You know... <laughs> <laughs> fucking like and yeah. all these and all these motherfuckers are on part of that grift and Vivek is no different but he says the right words while he's doing his sweaty little business businessman routine and so many people listen to him so many people believe him and I think that that makes them such fundamental cucks I cannot fucking stand that shit yeah no you're absolutely right and again it, it all goes to that cult of personality that you mentioned before it, you're a thousand percent correct and um you know it, it's it's crazy to me that um you know we've uh we've gotten to this point where people can't think for themselves i'm gonna keep advocating for people to think for themselves uh as much as i possibly can but uh you know it's up to them to do it um and i wish that it were easier to to get people to you know, <laughs> to get people to think for themselves, but it, it's, it's difficult for some reason. And I, I could, I can't figure out why. 
So well, because they're we, and this is the real shit. You want to drill down for a second? We come from a, a society that trains people from cradle to grave to compliance mechanisms. That Pavlovian conditioning of like, here's the the bell, the charm that lets you know when you can have your your yard time. The bell, the charm that lets you know when you can piss or shit. The bell or charm that lets you know when you can eat. The bell or charm that lets you know when you can go home and get let out of the kennel. The bell or charm. Beep, ring, the bell. That's how school is. School is a prison. And school yeah. teaches people from a very young age to comply. It teaches people group compliance. It teaches people from that level on that uh, if, if one of you does something wrong, it's justified to punish the group. Don't drag everybody down. We wouldn't want that. It trains people that, like, it doesn't matter who hit first. What matters is that uh, you're fighting at all. It doesn't matter if somebody committed aggression to you. Get used to it. That's how life is outside, and we, we're part of the fucking problem there. It teaches all of this shit on such a routine and regular basis and drilling down, and that's also the authority structure that's, like, the result of the fucking... Uh, the, the fucking churches that are directly affiliated with the authority structures and the fucking news media that tells everybody to to pick on the little guy as soon as the, the somebody's like, you know, oh, maybe we should try something else. Maybe we should try ivermectin. Ha ha! You eat horse paste! <laughs> fucking loser conspiracy <laughs> theorist. You're going to the vet for your medicine? No, we're getting pills from the doctor. Shut up, MAGA! <laughs> <laughs> fucking it's asinine it's so fucking asinine and it happens or on the other side you know oh you're trans you know all this identification it's getting too far and now they're furries there are kids identifying as cats and dogs and they're putting litter boxes in the restrooms and grooming kids with litter box no they're not that never happened you're lying and it's like that with like every little thing it's all designed to get people well i i mean i Hmm? Yeah. <sighs> it's frustrating. To say the least, it, it, it's frustrating to see all of these people get so easily duped and and honestly being used as as spreaders of propaganda just because somebody told them. Yeah. Um real. hopefully one day we can break that cycle. That's 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 when we'll know we've won is if we can break the cycle of people believing everything at face value that their favorite talking head tells them. Yeah, yeah. And that includes that include that includes people that that I agree with, you know, and we have to if we don't, we're fucked. We are absolutely fucked if we're not able to break free of this. Like and get rid of the like the delusions that are that have been holding us down forever. We are absolutely fucked. Like, yeah, absolutely. And we have to do better because if we don't, then what the fuck are we even doing? If we're just as bad as they are and our justification for being just as bad as they are is that they're bad. Hey, fucking great. You just proved that you're not better and that you're willing to do just the same things as they are. Oh, but they're doing it first. Probably not. You're supporting the state capitalist apparatus. They did it first. These people are not like the people who run the country are not communists. So like, uh, yeah, like I, 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 it's been, it's been many years for me of slowly realizing that a lot of these people are fundamentally unserious. They are fundamentally unserious. And that's like that, that's been, hard because I supported a lot of these people to get started and I supported a lot of these people while they were getting going and nope nah and they don't invite me on their shows I'll put it that way <laughs> you know the thing is though if, if, if we kept inviting people that we disagreed with and had those conversations we might actually find out that um, you know it's not, it's not, we're not as divided as we think we are. Like I had a space, uh, you, you, you might have, you might have been on it. Uh, but I had a space, uh, with lizard Jesus a few weeks, several weeks ago now, uh, as a ANCAP and com discussion, turns out we actually had far more in common than I ever thought possible. Um, and you know, I'm not going to live in his commune with him. Uh, but we have that respect for each other and we, um, you know, we understand that, you know, there, there, 
there's a partnership that could be had here in a free market. Um, and you know, it, it was a great conversation. And I owe that to the fact that I don't dehumanize commies for the fact of that they're commies. This is a self-proclaimed anarcho social anarcho communist. And we had a great conversation and realized that we agreed on far more than we disagreed on. Um, that's the, that's the key to undoing all of this. That is the key to dismantling the state. That is the key to, uh, you know, treating your fellow human being with dignity and respect and just a touch of empathy. Um, and that's the key to, to not, not advocating for the state to invoke violence against people that they disagree with. Yeah. I wish that more people would do that. Um, but I, I don't know. Is as humanity just degraded beyond repair? Well, I don't think that they've degraded beyond repair, but I think it's unlikely that they will make the choice to repair themselves. That's what I think. Like, I think personally that people are incentivized to the opposite. That people are incentivized to do the violence that will create the best possible circumstances for them to make their money, earn their numbers, and get their views. And that in the attention economy, and in the marketplace of ideas, attention is currency. So, right. like, as long as these people are still getting their support, they're not going to stop. We need to form an alternate attention economy, an, an alternate parallel attention economy of people who actually give a shit about the truth. But, you know, that's that's going to be a hard, hard line to move like. And, and you said it well in your tweet over here that I'll that I'll share here. I'm all cool and based until I go against the grain and condemn actual violence against commies by the state led by a self-proclaimed ANCAP. Sorry, but I'm not going to compromise my principles for popularity. Well, I'm not going to. <laughs> I'm just not going to. That's that's fundamentally who I am. You know, um, I have always been open to new ideas. I, di I, I didn't become an ANCAP overnight. I, can't, I, I started off as a Republican, then more conservative and constitutionalist, then became more libertarian. And then as new ideas were, you know, I sought them out. And as I, as I had conversations with people and read, uh, you know, I fundamentally changed because I wanted to be intellectually consistent and intellectually honest. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, even now, yeah, I, I call myself an ANCAP, I, 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 or a voluntarist or an anarchist, but I'm still open to somebody changing my mind on things. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't pretend to have all of the answers and I'm never going to have all of the answers. Do I think that I'm right in my current philosophy? Absolutely. But I also thought I was right when I was a conservative or, or a Republican, but I wasn't, <laughs> you know, uh, I just I just finished reading um, Stephanie Kelton's The Deficit Myth on Magic Monetary Theory. Uh, horrible book. <laughs> you know? uh, it, it was absolutely garbage and cancer. And and I honestly, had I not known any better, I would have thought it was a brilliant work of satire. But I do know better. Um, but that said, I seek out knowledge. Even if that means knowledge I disagree with, I seek out conversations, even if it's conversations that I disagree with, I seek out differing opinions and different philosophies because that's how I improve myself. And that's what we sh all should do. Mm -hmm. We should seek that self-improvement and we should, uh, we should challenge ourselves and understand why we believe what we believe, not just, I believe this and, and I'm right. And understand no, why motherfucker, you're not. <laughs> Yeah, that, that's another aspect of this. Why do you believe what you believe? Oh, uh, okay, so you're far more of an altruist than I am. Okay, that's cool and all. You, do you expect to invoke violence against me if I'm not that way? Oh, no. Well, that's surprising. Everything I've ever been told says yes. But, you know, from your mouth, you say that you say no. Well, that's interesting. We can actually work together. Yeah. Well, who to thunk it? Yeah, like, and, and, and that's the thing. They want us divided. They want us hitting each other so we can't hit them, um, to put it in a way that Twitter probably won't ban me for. Um, so, like, if we're too busy spending our energy, like, oh, the drag queens, or, oh, the Christians, or, <laughs> oh, the, 
if we just keep fucking fighting each other, we can't fight them. And they love that shit. They, especially since if we yeah. start killing each other, then like the state, uh, like doesn't have to worry about engaging their Malthusian bullshit. Like the same people who say that you are the carbon they want to reduce don't understand that if we start killing each other, we're doing their job for them. Yeah, absolutely. And that's you know that's why anarcho unity is kind of a big deal for me i think we should all unite and you know i i welcome libertarians who are statist to the discussion i welcome democrats to the discussion i welcome republicans to the discussion because we should all be welcoming to the discussion because that's how we learn and build off of each other if it, honestly like if, if you were to get somebody who um, you know, is statist in their ideology to have the same mindset that I have or that you have as we approach these types of issues. Uh, chances are they probably wouldn't be a statist for much longer. Um, and, uh, you know, that's never a bad thing. You know how you don't convince people that being a statist is bad by using the state's violence against them. Yeah, or using dehumanizing That's, language, being like, yeah, you know you yeah. and, like, your family and your friends and everything you've ever known, we're going to kill you if you don't do what we want. That's not good marketing. <laughs> you don't walk into Walmart and they're like, buy Cheetos or you die. You buy Cheetos because right. they use, like, addictive programming. You know, we need to become the addictive programming, and that's part of the problem is that the state knows how to addict people. They've Pavlovianly programmed these people to be forced in their fucking Prussian education model and fucking indoctrinated to follow the state and all of the state's precepts and edicts and shit. And as a result, we have people who are fundamentally flawed, fundamentally like against each other, um, you know, rigged against each other by a system that wants them to think, you know what? Yeah, if only we get rid of X group. That'll that'll be the, the last linchpin before we have freedom. No, it won't. In fact, it's on the road to tyranny, you cuck. <laughs> oh, that's uh, that that's we can't say that, though, because that might hurt some feelings because, well, I like what I'm seeing because it doesn't affect me. Mm -hmm. It affects those other people that I don't like. So therefore, it is OK. Yeah, them. It's always them. Never self-reflect. Never self-improve, never self-criticize, never like honestly, and this is the real shit. A lot of these people are affiliated with right wingers, uh, and a lot of the right wingers are affiliated with Christianity. You should really start reading Matthew a little bit harder, motherfucker. Oh yeah, I mean, if if people actually, and I'm saying this as somebody that believes in God and uh, subscribes to the idea that Jesus was the Messiah, and I believe that. OK, I do not call myself a Christian. I don't because if Christians actually were Christ like, they would not be as awful and unpalatable and toxic and judgmental and just outright awful as they are. Yeah, it, it, it is disgusting. You know, the things that that I've seen Christians do while touting the fact that they're Christians. It's like, mind your fucking business and stop judging people. Honestly, it's that literally be, some that should be our next Christian our next space. We should do a space with a bunch of Christian anarchists. I'll I'll host that uh probably like actually yeah right before my stream just like I'm doing this Saturday. We could just do it next Saturday. They won't be at church. Yeah, so, that'd be great. Let's yeah. do it. Yeah you can tag all the Christian anarchists you know we can get a bunch of them speaking we can run it as long as as, as long as we can and uh, we can get the conversation going on what a real Christ-like approach to the world looks like. Yeah, absolutely. I, honestly, if if Christians adopted a Christ-like view, the world would be a much better place. But they, yeah, Multiple. and I mean a legitimately Christ-like view. More Tolstoy, <laughs> less Torba. Yeah. Anyway, all right, well, y'all feel free to follow us, ANCAP Air and myself at both Jeremiah accounts, um, and feel free to support me with the links in the uh, replies if you liked what you heard today and don't want me to be homeless. Um, so 
there are many ways to uh, to support ANCAP Air as well. Uh, regularly posts crypto donation links at the bottom of his posts. And also, we're both uh, working on a site I launched not too long ago, uh, uh, Anarch Unity, which is a site for anarchist unity. So if you want to write for our site, you're more than welcome to hit hit us up or like make videos or whatever. Also, real quick, let me just... The Reaper's son says there is only one enemy, and when you fight each other, you make it stronger. Yeah, good. I like that. I'm going to uh, repost that. Um, and Juan Cruz says, the problem with RG's commies is they represent less than 2% and want to impose their government. They've th The fire you've seen on Arj are all of them? I'm not ex I, I Okay, just going to assume that English is your second language. Um, and they are just because... They like fuck all governments. Without Argentinian federal police, Malay would not be in government. I'm not exactly sure what you were concluding there, but like, to um, the fact that somebody's a minority does not mean that they're wrong. Like, plenty of people are minorities. Anarchists in general are the minority. So if that's what you were trying to imply is that they were trying to impose their government, maybe some of them. Some of them are anarchist communists, and they don't want to oppose anything. So. And then Malay isn't going to impose the forced exchange rate of the dollar. Taxes will be collected in dollars because there will, they, there will be de facto dollarization. Why? Because all Argentines save in dollars, but if the dollar fails, we can all change currency because there is no federal exchange rate. Okay, but if they currently don't have the money to exchange for dollars because they have to immediately spend what was cut in half in terms of value... Uh, because otherwise they can't pay their rent or buy groceries or whatever because he cut the currency value in half, then that means that like paying their, their debts or whatever in dollars wouldn't actually improve that, you know? It would just mean that like the, 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 the currency would be even worth less and their savings would tank even more until eventually their savings were non-existent, especially if this shock therapy finishes off quickly, you know? Like, this isn't a good strategy. They should just let actual free markets take hold. Yeah, I, I, uh, I agree with you, bud. Right. Um, I Honestly, if, if genuine free markets took hold for literally anything, we would be in a better spot. Absolutely. Freedom and, and, in general. Free and, markets, free communes, free fucking primitivist yeah. like tribes free whatever as long as it's free stop making people unfree that's the solution yeah hey jeremiah did you read my essay on uh justice i didn't i'll have to read that yeah it's it's in my highlights tab it's uh it's just it's entitled justice and anarchy and and how that works and i obviously i take the ancap approach because that's that's what yeah. i am but uh you know it shows how something like that uh, can be uh, a system like that can form and be more along the lines of justice in anarchism than statism has ever created. As long as you're actually an, like so many people, are, like as you're seeing now, who claim anarchism are anything but. They they will cuck to as soon as they can. They will cuck to the soonest power that seems big enough to give them what they want. Very opportunist, very unprincipled. Yeah, and uh, and it, it again, it's sad. And, and every time we see that, it doesn't matter if it's somebody proclaiming to be an ANCAP or or your particular flavor of anarchism. We should call it out. Um, and that doesn't necessarily mean we have to be hostile towards it. It just means that we should challenge people to be intellectually consistent and, and you know, again, engage in those conversations because it's. Uh, that's how we that's how we grow that that's how we teach also that's how we get people on our side and uh, um, that's that's the solution to literally everything is talking and treating your fellow human being with respect and uh, I, I, it, it it sucks that I have to like repeat that but apparent there it seems to be lost on a lot of people that treating your fellow person with your, your fellow human with respect, uh, even if they, uh, if you disagree with them, like that's some sort of awful idea. It's not. That's how we. That's how we resolve issues. Yeah, 
Yeah. Oh, and also, thank you for the five dollars uh, to the. Per I'm not sure if you wanted me to be public about like your name, but thank you. Uh, that will definitely go to probably not coffee. I buy I buy fucking caffeine pills, fucking. But <laughs> um, yeah, uh, if anyone wants to support me, there are ways to do that. And if anyone wants to support uh, Ancap Air, feel free to follow and also feel free to catch his essays on anarchunity.com. Plenty, plenty more where that came from. And uh, with that, uh, I think just, yeah, be free. And if you're anti-freedom, you're my enemy. I think that's a pretty good, pretty good point of agreement between the two of us. I agree. Absolutely. All right. Well, with that being said, smash the fucking state. Yeah. Smash that motherfucker. Yeah. Thanks for having me on, bud. I appreciate it. Thank you for coming on. Anytime, man.